Today we have a Quintilian Institute double feature. We'll be talking about a pair of words that describe a couple of the ways that conjunctions can function. So, as I was saying, conjunctions will be in the spotlight today. As you may or may not already know, conjunctions are a kind of word that link other words or groups of words together, and they come in a few varieties. For today, though, we're really only interested in the coordinating conjunctions. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. Or, as they're sometimes affectionately known, the fanboys. One of the most common places for coordinating conjunctions to show up is in the creation of lists. If you're writing a grocery list, you're bound to have an and in there somewhere, or if you're giving somebody a list of possible options, you'll probably include an or somewhere in that list. Well, with all of that in mind, it is my singular pleasure to introduce you to our latest rediscoveries. These two words have to do with the number of conjunctions that you include in a list, and they are polysyndeton and asyndeton. In most lists, each item in the list will be separated by a comma. Then, before the last item in the list, there will usually be a coordinating conjunction. It's really nothing too fancy. But with polysyndeton, you dispense with the commas altogether and repeat the coordinating conjunction in between every item in the list. Of course, poly in polysyndeton means many, and there's no limit to the number of conjunctions that you can stuff into a sentence using this technique. So, you could have a polysyndetic sentence like this one. Before I left town, I reminded Jack to water the grass and feed the dog and take out the trash and paint the fence and prune the trees and wash the windows. The repetition of the conjunction can have a sort of overbearing effect. Each item in the list lands with the added weight of the conjunction. A writer who writes a sentence like this one may want to make sure that you can't miss anything on the list. The repetition calls attention to itself, thereby focusing your attention on each item to a greater degree. Or you could have a case of polysyndeton in a sentence like this one. Today we're offering chips, or fries, or salad, or fruit. Again, the repetition of the conjunction here calls attention to itself, but this one feels more thorough than exhausting, probably because it's about something more friendly than chores. The point is that polysyndeton is a deviation from the norm. Most lists aren't written like this, so readers are likely to read a list differently when it comes with such a hefty portion of conjunctions included. To my ear, polysyndeton sounds heavy, authoritative, and rigid in a way that a normal list wouldn't. The repetition gives the list a sense of studied finality. With such an obvious structure, it can't have just been written offhand. Now, in contrast, asyndeton is a list without any conjunctions at all. That is, it's just commas all the way. For example, I spent the afternoon outside, listening to birds, counting flowers, watching insects, wading through streams. Without the conjunctions to structure the list, it feels much looser. There could be other things the writer did that afternoon, but these are the ones that came to mind. Or again, she wasn't picky. Curry, tacos, sushi, pizza, grilled cheese, waffles, it all sounded good to her. Like the previous list, this one feels kind of open. It's a list of possible examples more than the final word on the matter. So, in general, asyndeton leads to a more fluid kind of list. Without the obvious structure of the repeated conjunctions, the list feels less rigidly determined and doesn't convey the same kind of weight. That is, when I read and write with polysyndeton, I hear the repeated conjunctions like somebody pounding on the desk to emphasize each item in the list. But when it comes to asyndeton, I tend rather to imagine somebody in the posture of daydreaming, musing about their ideas and putting them together in a meaningful but perhaps less disciplined way. Without the conjunctions to hold them in place, the ideas and items in the list are freer to flow around each other and perhaps even move in and out of the sentence. Obviously, these are not the only things that you could accomplish with poly and asyndeton. Using them in different situations will yield different effects. So give it a try and share your sentences with us in the comments. Both of these rhetorical techniques work because they're deviations from the norm. If you were to just write a normal list with a single conjunction towards the end, your readers wouldn't give it a second thought because that's just how lists work. However, when you write lists that are either full of conjunctions or void of them, the difference from the usual leads readers to interpret those sentences in a special way. And that's a lesson worth remembering whenever you're writing. If you're going to steer away from the typical way of saying something, it will force your readers to think more carefully about the reasons you had for saying it in that particular way. Now, of course, that's not something you'll always want your readers to have to do, but it can be exciting and effective in the right situations. But that'll do it for today. I'm grateful that you could join us here at the Quintilian Institute for another look at words about words, and I'm looking forward to our next meeting. Until then, however, I'll just invite you to like, and to comment, and to subscribe.